Whenever I post that I use film simulations and film simulation recipes, the most common response I get is why don't you just use actual film? So first things first, let's just define what is a film simulation. A film simulation is a digital preset that emulates the look of classic film stocks, mainly from the two different camera brands, uh, Fujifilm as well as Ricoh, which is not as popular or well known as the Fujifilm film simulation recipes, but Ricoh has their own and they're pretty nice as well. What these do, they allow you to achieve the color and the tones that look like film and having them apply directly in camera. And mind you that these only apply to the J. Pegs. They don't apply to the bras, and this gives the photographers the ability to have a final image that requires little to no additional editing um, on just the JPEG. But one thing that we have to realize is that film simulations won't replicate film exactly. They just can't. You can't have zeros and ones replicate the kind of like magic of a chemical formula or a chemical reaction. It's just pretty much impossible to do that. So you really have to expect variations in color and tone when comparing them to the actual real film that they're based out of. It's not going to look exactly the same. And you have to be prepared to tweak the settings and adjust your workflow to balance the differences between digital and the film aesthetics. Film simulations only affect the JPEGs. So they're producing a stylized image without need for further editing, if you please. The one thing is you can apply these film simulations uh, to raw files in editing software like Lightroom or Capture One, but these won't be exactly the same as the in-camera output, mainly because they're Lightroom and Capture One's like best version of that instead of being processed in the camera. But you know, we can dive deeper on this topic in a different video. I was a wedding photographer for 10 years and I spent a lot of time editing and processing raw files upwards of to, you know, 4,000 to sometimes even one time it was like 12,000 photos just for a single wedding. And I was also shooting raw for all of my personal work. And I just got to the point where I was tired of having to do something just to look at the photos. I wanted to be able to get to a point where I could take some photos a day and just ship those ones. And that's where the JPEG workflow kind of happens. It really streamlined my workflow when I transitioned out of professional wedding photography. I want to dive into specifically why I prefer using film simulations in my workflow. For me, they aren't going to be just a shortcut. They actually offer a distinct advantage over raw processing. And in many cases, I even find it more preferable than shooting on actual film. But before I share those advantages, I did want to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. I've actually been using Squarespace for over 10 years now. Their templates and their easy to use interface make it incredibly simple to create and maintain a professional looking website without any coding experience necessary. My Squarespace website was an essential part of how I built my photography business. It allowed me to showcase my portfolio, share recent work on my blog, and also receive inquiries from potential clients through my contact form. If you're one of those photographers that are relying on your Instagram profile as the sole place to share your work, as well as build your photography business, business, I would really consider making a website on Squarespace. You can visit squarespace.com slash Reggie to start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So traditional film is heavily dependent on color temperature. So it makes it a little bit tricky to shoot in varying lighting conditions without differences in color casts for your shots. For example, Cinestill 800T, that is specifically for, you know, tungsten, like night scenes, and then Kodak Portra 400, that's mainly for daylight. So if you're gonna waver into different color temperatures, you're gonna see different casts. But with film simulations, I've specifically created a recipe that's agnostic to white balance or color temperatures out in the field. It performs consistently whether I'm indoors or outdoors or shooting at night because the film simulation recipe is built around an auto white balance. And that's not really something that you can do when you're shooting with film. <laughs> With film, you're also locked into a specific ISO, which makes moving between different lighting environments and different lighting levels a little bit more challenging. So with film simulations, you can have that, you know, kind of like nod to a film look, but it still gives you the flexibility to bump up the ISO for low light situations and still kind of maintain that look. So you're kind of getting the best of the analog look with the convenience of a digital photography workflow. <music> 
For me, the most precious thing about all of this workflow stuff is time. I sick of having to process so many photos that you know that I had to do through my wedding photography days so film simulations offer a much faster workflow compared to raw processing or even the lengthy processing of developing and scanning my own film so I get the look that I want right out of camera or at least very very close and it saves me time in both personal work as well as professional work to go a little bit deeper on this is even if I did have to edit the photos I edit JPEGs which means I don't have to do any type of preview rendering or a lot of overhead on my CPU to be able to render the raws um, editing on JPEG is something you can easily do on the computer and in Lightroom or if you need to you can just edit straight on your camera roll on your phone very quick and easy <laughs> Shooting with actual film can get super expensive from buying the rolls of film to paying for the development and the scanning or if you want to do it yourself, investing in the equipment to develop and scan yourself is an investment, right? With film simulations, it gives you kind of like that analog feel without the ongoing costs. Make it more budget friendly considering that I have a family, I have kids to feed, all that stuff. Like I don't have a lot of money to be spending on film and development costs and all that stuff. The last reason for me is really film simulations are kind of an artistic preference for me. They strike the perfect balance between creativity and a technical constraint. Having a technical constraint allows me to focus my efforts. Having a technical constraint allows me to focus my efforts on specific elements like exposure, um, finding good light, or focusing on the composition. And unlike the limitless possibilities of raw files, I feel like working within the limitations of a JPEG is similar to kind of like getting a film scan. You only have so much that you can push and pull the files. So it enhances my creative process for being able to just really have a clear vision without having like infinite possibilities. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it still has a little bit of leeway for me to do some light editing if needed. You can push and pull these JPEGs up to a stop if needed. You'd be surprised you know what you can do so now i want to ask you all do you shoot jpeg film simulations do you shoot jpeg film simulation recipes i'm curious so share why or why not down in the comments and if you want to check out my favorite film simulation recipes check out these videos right here mm -hmm.